We are back with Design League 3.1. No Swale Hollow today, Nick. <laughs> We're back with Design League 3.1. Um, we're gonna jump right into, uh, some playthroughs today. Manatee, how you doing? Master's week, Tiger's back. Well, you know, he said he'll make a final, final decision tomorrow, but... <laughs> I think we means... I think we know that means Tiger's back. But yeah, Design League. We're gonna be doing Design League 3.1 playthroughs today. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's fun, it's casual, it's Design League, what could be more fun? So for those of you guys who don't know what Design League is, it's basically just a uh, fun and casual little design competition that uh, gets put on with a prompt that usually consists of six, maybe nine holes... To build around a uh, you know a common theme or a, you know kind of a prompt think writing prompts in high school um, and then we give feedback to those designers to help them hone their skills um, and we have a little little friendly competition we go behind closed doors and we we uh, rank them all um, to kind of give our you know idea of, of who performed the prompt the best so uh, for Th Design League Season 3, uh, Episode 1, let's call it, um, we did a plot design challenge. And so we asked the contestants to build a six-hole course on a plot uh, that they can choose. And the judging is primarily going to be based off of just uh, the, the plot, the features that it has, and the way that the golf course incorporates those features on that plot. Um, and... Again, Design League's supposed to be fun and casual, so we're just going to have fun. Uh, you know, take a look at, at what you guys have put together. I'm really excited. I haven't I haven't looked at any of these yet, so uh, I look forward to seeing uh, what you guys have, have put together. So I guess without any further ado, I'm going in just the order that you guys submitted your courses in on the forum. Um, so, you know, if you have any questions about that, um, the schedule's over on the, um, over on the forum thread. Today we're going to be doing Paul Royal, Rich NUFC, Seb K, CG444, Irish Golf, Mr. Highbay, and ABPG1812. And tomorrow we will cover the remaining courses. So, um, I see Paul Royal's course right here, Guinevere Golf School. So why don't we dive right in. Um, I'm going to play all these on pro, no tempo, just because, A, um, I suck at this game, for those of you who don't know. Um, and, yeah, I don't want, uh, you know, my awfulness to incorporate, or, uh, you know, yeah, Manatee knows, Jack knows. <laughs> um, I don't want, uh, you know, my suckiness to, uh, you know, influence my opinion of your course <laughs> um, and we'll set all these to low winds as well we'll just leave everything on default beginner no tempo would be more fair <laughs> thanks Seb all right and then pins hmm we're gonna play all the same pins for everybody and I like to play pin two so we're going to play everybody's pin twos, if there are pin twos. I don't think we really said that they had to be multi-pinned, so... Yeah, let's take a look. Paul Royal, you're up first. So first things first, let's take a look around these plots and see how we are using the land. So first things first... Looks like we're in Boreal. Is this Boreal? Boreal, yeah. We've got some nice ridges. Clubhouse is at a nice high point on the plot. Let's 
Got a interesting landform out here. It looks like we've used a lot of the default planting. We do have some flowers and other interesting things going on. All right. A bit of water. A little bit of land movement to work with. Looks like we're staying up on the, the higher areas here. So, all right, let's... Uh, Go ahead and play through. So off the bat here, I'd like to see, yep, big opening tee shot, which I'm not, you know, I'm not always against a, a big dramatic opening hole or downhill tee shot or anything like that. But what I would like to see is more of the hole in front of us. Um, these tee boxes here are blocking our view downhill and this might be you know we're 100 feet downhill that might be a bit much for an opening drive um i can barely make out this bunker here um you know which isn't the end of the world we have scout cam and stuff but we'd like to see a little bit more of the opening the opening hole there and yeah this is definitely drivable so let's see i'm obviously going to take this on right you know, no tempo and all. This is all over it. <laughs> the planting actually isn't bad. The there, We are using a lot of uh, default trees. Um, which isn't always a bad thing. With... Um, these dead trees, they tend to stick out like a, you know, a sore thumb on that. And we do have a lot of planting that's really close to some of the playing surfaces here. Um, but I like, you know, I like what's going on with the, the grasses and ferns over here. I'd like to see these bushes, like red bushes like this, sunken down. It looks like these might have been multi-planted. Um, so dropping those down uh, would probably help out a bit in making them look a little less, uh, you know, obstructive. You did a good job at least making the bunkers uh, facing, you know, the, the golfer. Yeah, the planting can be a little busy. Um, yeah, maybe with the, the red flowers and that. Um, the bunkering, th like this bunker here, the way you've sculpted it with the hill behind it, um, makes sense. I think this one here, the sculpting's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit harsh on it. Um, so smoothing those those surfaces out behind the bunkers will help out a little bit in terms of uh, making them feel like they sit in the land a little bit more naturally. Um, also bunkers like this um, could probably use a little bit more uh, volume to them. Um, you know, these, these bunkers feel like they'd be appropriately sized for the most part. Uh, this one feels like it's a little uh, it's splooji. <laughs> it's a little skinny. But yeah, let's see what's going on on the green. General green shape is a little bit uh, rough. I'd maybe smooth out the green shape a little bit, but overall, it's not. It's not terrible. Let's see if we can make a putt. Nope. Was that green surface around the bunker? Uh, I thought it was... Oh, it's fringe around the bunker. So that might have been from green... Let's look on this hole here then. Oh, that is green around the bunker. Interesting. Yeah, so that would be fringe from uh, surfacing a secondary surface around the bunkers. I didn't even notice that. Um, yeah, it does look a little... Uh, a little funny. I guess I could see why you might want to try it to get the ball to roll into the bunkers, but I don't think you'd really have that issue. Um, I would say that the the bunkers should probably, because we saw it on the first hole as well, the bunkers could probably use some s breathing room from the playable surfaces. Um, I think these are splined because they don't have the weird bunker. Um... 
thing going on around them. This tee shot would look better opening up the backdrop raising tee than previous hole wouldn't be so far downhill. Yes. Yeah, I think I see what you're saying. Because the last green is right here. So if this all this land came up a bit, then you could still have a downhill here with a little bit more of a view. We are doing a par three. I don't know about the fairway all the way to the tee box. Um, on a par three, I'd say you probably only need, um, you know, up to maybe 140 yards. And then also our, oh, our waypoint is working. Okay. For some reason I was thinking it was giving me a much shorter club. So we're up 40 feet. Yeah, the look isn't terrible. I think the I think the the bunkers though could use. I, I I like I like that you left enough space for us to run a ball on. I think that was good. Um, I think the bunkers should could use some breathing space from the fairway. So having the fairway splined, you know, maybe even just down to the the top of the bunkers here, and then uh, just letting the bunkers sit below them. And then again the the green shape is a little bit um kind of rough around the edges let's take a stab at this i'll go in the hole oh ho, ho. all right <laughs> Our green is pretty uh, pretty straightforward. I like that we have a little bit of a helping slope back here. I assume there might be a pin up here, which might be. I mean, it's not that. It's really not that bad of a, a pin position, all things considered. So, tap in birdie, ten out of ten. <laughs> All right, so I think I think we're a little blind on the tee shot again. I, I think the land between me and the landing area, uh, right in this area here, could come down a bit. Um, we're doing a lot of going downhill, so I'm interested to see how. Well, we I guess we had a. F I guess the last hill was like 40 feet uphill, so we'll have to see. Um, par five. I don't hate the tree here, but I'm worried that because of the camber, the fairway, it's it could block out a lot of players. Um, but it is a par five. I think some a feature like that maybe could be a, a little bit further down the fairway uh, so you don't get blocked right behind the tree. Um, but overall, I don't hate what you're doing on this hole. Yes, yeah, so this is going to kick left. And then, yeah, the planting, like the undergrowth and stuff blocking me out from the view of the green. Um, I'm not a huge fan of just given that we don't have a ton of width to work with here. Um, I don't mind the tree, to be honest. I know some people will have a problem with the tree. Um, and again, the planting is really close to a lot of the playing area. Like, if you miss this fairway, you're blocked out by trees and bushes. There's no... There's no really gray area. It's very binary. It's either you're in the fairway with a, with a shot at the green or you're completely blocked out there's no in between so you know try to give your courses a little room to breathe um you know make sure you have a little bit of of you know rough around the the fairways um to give the player to play i'm playing no tempo so obviously i'm not going to spend much time out here but those are things to consider And I can hit a nice draw easily around the tree. <laughs> the green's a little flat, but it is a little small. I will say surfaces like um, this right here 
I don't think they, I, I don't think this needs to come in like that. I, I would again try to just smooth these surfaces out. This can be a real simple shape and I think be just as effective. Um, we also have, again, grass really close. Actually, we have grass on the playing surfaces. Um, a couple areas here. So just, you know, again, give the give the holes a little room to breathe. I don't hate the planting. It is a little, it is a little busy. Um, and, and we are using a lot of uh, just the stock trees. Um, ways I think you can make planting like this a little bit more interesting is kind of layer it to where, you know, and you've done it a little bit where you have the grasses up front and then we go to the bushes and then from there we go, you know, trees. Um, but I don't think we've seen a lot of the, the trees that kind of um, build up the, the planting scheme uh, to, to something unique. It, it again, feels mostly uh, auto-genned. Seb, you're expecting an ace? I mean, you know, it could happen. Make an eagle putts. Okay, I like, like first first glance, I like this look off the tee. I think this is your best look so far. Um, I think that this is, dare I say, framed nicely. And um, yeah, it, this hole feels like we have a little bit more space. See how we don't, well, okay, the planting is coming all the way down. So where we have light rough here, I would not plant this. I would only plant the the heavy rough and then leave the light rough to be light rough. Um, another thing... Actually, I'm not even going to say it because you do have a marking bunker here. I would say that these bunkers should be a little bit more faced so we can see them from the T, but we do have a bunker here that kind of marks them, so I'm really not going to give you that. Give you too much for that. Um, I, I'm not a huge fan of the the surrounds for the bunkers. We've had green and now fairway surrounds for the bunkers. So I would try to keep them consistent. Um, and in this case, with these ones here especially, they could definitely just stay either light rough or heavy rough. Um, and instead of using the second surface texture for the bunkers, I think it would behoove you to just uh, spline around them if you're going to use light rough or just leave them. Each of these holes has at least 40 feet of elevation change with three out of four having at least eight feet. Oh, 80 feet, either up or down. Um, yeah, there has been a lot of elevation change. Um, on its own, the 50 feet uphill tee shot, I don't think is bad. And I don't think this hole is bad. I think this does 80 feet uphill pretty well. I'd like to see maybe a little more with the green here. Um, I think you had a good opportunity to bunker this because it was so far uphill. Um, since we did bunker the right side there, you know, to f encourage the golfer to play to that side of the fairway, um, some bunkers maybe short left here would make a lot of sense. Um, here, there's not really much I have to think about on my second shot. It's just, you know, hit right at this pin. And yeah, I'm on no tempo, but I'd be doing the same thing whether I was <laughs> was or wasn't. This lime green grass over here <laughs> is, is uh, very eye-catching. Um, I don't know if I'd use it in this, in this sense. Um... And the planting is a little busy behind the green. But I do like that we took the time to to plant all that because we're looking at it. Um, you know, maybe some rock faces would look nice in here. Um, I don't know. I, <laughs> the, 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 green, the green grass is a bit much for me. Uh, 
Okay, so we've got another uphill par three. We've done both par threes uphill, right? The first one I think was like 40 feet uphill. I like that this isn't uh, way uphill, but we do still have the same kind of look here where the green is blind and the green is actually running away from you so we can't see the green at all. Um, I'd like to see a little more variety in the par threes in terms of, um, they're both kind of long. They've had similar green shapes. Um, we've seen the bunkers this the same kind of way on them. Um, you know, it's it's maybe a downhill par three here would have made sense. Seb wants an ace. Should we try hard this? Let's see how close we. Nah, too much wind. Catch that slope. I do like that the green slopes have been subtle. Um, we are on default green speeds, as um, Sroll pointed out earlier. And I'm not always a fan of default green speeds just because, well, any of the default green speeds, just because you know, we can get those from default settings. But, I mean, if you pick 144 as <laughs> your green speed, eh, whatever. We're blind a little bit. I don't hate this one as a blind tee shot, though. Um, this this one makes sense because there's no really hazards. It, it is narrow, but it it's pretty straightforward. Um... Yeah. Oh, and we've got a little little pond to finish this off. I will say that I think the elevation change is kind of one of those characteristics or features of the plot that we're seeing being used here. I think to kind of play devil's advocate for that. Um, so, you know, the, the ways it was used, um, I, I think there was some holes where the, the elevation change made sense. Um, and I, I would defend the, the uphill uh, par four. Um, I think the opening shot being 100 feet downhill. Um, I, I think that one was a bit much. Uh, Stroll says, the issue on the course is that if you go off the fairway at all on any par four, you're dead. Yes, yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, you know, I, I mentioned that before. Anything off the fairway to either side... Um, this, this is a little better. We have a little bit more breathing room and the planting's not as encroaching, but again, it's still over here in the light rough. Um, I think, you know, I think I'd like to see that pulled back a little bit. Hey, Lisey, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> oh, hi, Maddie. Um, I like... I actually like your little uh, kicker slope here. I think it's friendly because we have the water here. You know, I like that we can play over to the right and get a little uh, little kick towards the pin. Uh, the pin's still a little spicy. I think a, a pin, maybe a little bit more breathing room like in this area here would have made a lot of sense. Um, and again, I know I commented on it before, but again, the green shapes here, uh, I think we're just going a little, little little on the crazy side with them. I think just kind of smoothing these out again um, right through here and, and right up against here and give this bunker a little bit of room to breathe. Let's see. Oh. This is why we play on no tempo because I can't even consider all the other things the game's throwing at me. <laughs> hey Charlie, how you doing? Ooh. Right. Yeah, Sroll, it was a bit downhill, so it didn't really play like too long. 
but that is a good point that the green might be a touch small for that. Um, and then Nick, you asked a question earlier. Um, how would you route or use the rest of the plot for a full course? Let's see. If I was gonna bring this to a full course, one thing I would do is definitely work on the elevation change just a little bit. Um, you know, I, I think Nick made a comment that, you know, bringing up this area for the where the first green is um, would make a lot of sense. So we're maybe, you know, 60 or 70 feet down for that length of a, a hole and not, you know, 100 and some odd feet. Um, And the rest of the plot, I you know, I think I'd work al just along these hillsides, kind of like what we were doing. Um, this valley back here is kind of interesting, too. You could play, you know, you could add a couple holes on the front nine over there to kind of extend the routing and then bring the back nine back down through the, the valley here in the back, which would be interesting. Might run out of plot space if we did that. Do you have a lot of space out? Am I off the plot? I'm off the plot. I think, yeah, it's right here. So, yeah, I think using that valley and kind of working your way back up to the out and back on the back nine would be interesting. You could even play down this way as well, but there's a lot of really aggressive land out here. But yeah, not a bad start. Let's go ahead and make our uh, our final putt here. Yeah, overall not bad. Um, that was Paul Royal, Guinevere Golf School. And up next, we have Rich. Actually, let's... There it is, okay. I haven't played any of them either, Charlie, other than the one I just played. This is the first time I've been seeing them, so. Alright. One T set, and we'll play pin two. All right, let's see what Rich has cooked up for us. Okay. Wow, okay, so we've got some... Uh, got a nice little valley we're playing through. Some neat ridges on both sides. Looks like we're in Boreal again. And this is nice. The routing is using we have this river slash lake river, I'm gonna call it, that we're playing through. Yeah, it does look nice. And it looks like we've used the river in some interesting ways. Some off course objects to take a peek at. All right. So, first things first. <clears throat> Downhill off the tee. I can see our landing area and our bunkers nicely out here. Um, it does feel like we're really pinching driver. 
Um, let's see here. Green has some interesting slopes to it. Looks like there was some thought put into that. And then we have some bunkering there too that, you know, it feels like there's, um, it feels like there's a clear, what are my buttons? There we go. It feels like there's a clear preferred angle um, from the left-hand side here. So I'd argue that the bunker on the right here maybe doesn't even need to be there at all. Um, or that you could even just open this space up and, and leave the bunker more as kind of a, a dare I say, framing bunker um, in the back right there. Uh-oh. I don't think I have my notifications there. Oh, we had subs come in and I missed it. <laughs> Mama Long Nips with all the subs. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin, for the subs. I appreciate that. You, I think you're you're the first uh, you're the first one to uh, to buy subs here, and uh, all of you guys that just got subs, you are the first subs. So, um, congratulations, and and thanks again, Kevin. See if I can get my notifications working here. Oh, maybe they did go off and I'm just in the game and it wasn't working properly. <laughs> well, that's fun. Thanks again for that. Rich, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a clear like layback to three wood going on here. <laughs> and uh Driver does feel, again, a, a little pinched. So, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd say you could open up this right-hand side, but, you know, depending on what kind of course and difficulty we're going for, there's an argument to be made that you'd want to pinch Driver here. The hole's not terribly long. I'm obviously just going to smash Driver between the two bunkers. <laughs> Slang it! All right. Well, I guess, Seb, I saw you use my uh, default emotes there, so I guess I got to work on some emotes uh, off stream today <laughs> for you guys to enjoy. <clears throat> and then again, um, you know, the the bunker, the bunkering's all visible um, from the fairway, so I think we did a a decent job with the sculpting there. I think it could be, I think the shapes could be a little more interesting in terms of, uh, you know, giving us, you know, maybe bringing the, the bunkers up a little bit closer to the, the green around here, just to give us a little bit more visual from the, uh, the fairway here. <laughs> Yeah, you guys have all the you guys all have the old logo too for uh, your uh, sub icons. I gotta I gotta update that as well. Overall, I like this green too. I think there's some interesting slopes going on, and it, it makes sense. There's nothing that looks like it's glaring, unless you have a pin in a really weird spot. Kevin, I completely agree. We need a we need a Taco Bell partnership here all right this looks really nice um i like the look off the tee here uh the planting does feel a little bit segmented almost like the the andres are just the, the purple andres <laughs> are sitting um in just this area if they uh blend it a little bit more into the trees here i think uh you know that would make a lot of sense but we just kind of have like you know patch here and patch there um you know, I'd like to see them maybe blended back into the rocks a little bit. But overall, I like this look a lot. Um, this green slope... Okay, so there's a few things to unpack here. The uh, the creek the creek looks really nice. However, it is uh, completely blind off the tee. Yeah, it's... It's... Uh, you can you can see the planting back there, so I'd argue that it's 
Uh, Sroll asks, how do we get to the green? Um, fair enough, we just trample through the... <laughs> we just trample through the wildlife. Or through the wild area. Um, but a path there wouldn't actually be a bad thing, because uh, a, lo a lot of times you can use paths to kind of draw the, the player's eye towards towards the green. Um, so you, you could you definitely use that in this case where you have a, a little path that kind of wanders in and then through and out the other side. Um, I'm going to defend the creek saying that there is planting here so you can kind of see like where the creek is. Um, with that being said, the, the, the hill being right here does make it a little bit more difficult to see it and I think maybe we could do a bit more to, to show that to the golfer. But uh, I was mentioning that the green slopes here on the left, I think, make a lot of sense. Uh, I think this one... Oh, you guys can't see the cursor. There it is. Uh, the one on the right here that's pushing us down into the bunker uh, could probably be smoothed out or maybe even pushed into the middle of the green a little bit more to, to leave a little space down here to, to breathe. But you saved all your path work for the Backyard Bonanza contest. Fair enough, Rich. I know you've been hard at work on a lot of courses, so... <laughs> I go ahead and hit five iron into this. But again, this look off the tee, the way that the bunker sits in here, um, and the hole's clearly moving left to right. I, th I think visually you can tell what the hole's doing, um, and I think you did a good job of that. Ace cam. <laughs> All right, three or two putt. All right. Yeah, Charlie, I, I was looking at that, the, the way that the green sits versus the creek. I think that it's doing that because there's a little bit of a, there's a hill between the creek and the, the green. I don't think the green was necessarily sitting below the creek. Okay, so we have a drivable four. I like that it's short. <laughs> um, Cause it's like, I guess it could probably be a little bit longer cause it definitely feels like I can bunt three wood to this green. Um, but overall it's running, the green's running away from you a little bit. So it's definitely, this is definitely gonna be hard to hold. Um, as far as the, the look off the tee here, I, I like what we're doing with the, the planting coming in like this um, on the right-hand side. It does feel a little bit bare. Uh, you can't see it behind chat, but if you look behind chat over here, it's a little bit, it's a little bit barren. Um, and then the, the ridge behind us feels a, a bit abrupt in terms of where it... I guess how steep it is and, and how close it is to us. Um, I feel like that could be softened back a little bit or maybe use some rocks to kind of give it a little bit more cliffside. Um, some of the trees also feel like they're like in the cliffs, like these one, this one up here, these ones up here feel like they're like sitting like right in the cliff rather than being kind of on these areas. So I feel like that might be able to be planted in a little bit more if you're using it as like a backdrop. Um, overall, I, uh, I I like the whole design. I think it could be a touch longer to, to kind of take away three wood and then make driver like a partial drive. Um, but I'm going to see if I can sneak a driver up here or three wood through here. Again, I'm cheating because I'm using no tempo, but. <laughs> well, there you go. We're still in the bunker. So well done. But once you get past the those bunkers, there's not a whole lot of danger to worry about. You know? And the bunker shot does seem fairly...
trivial. CG! Chris, how you doing? Oh, we were not paying attention. Right. Ooh, another nice look off the tee. Ooh, you're giving us three iron for the waypoint. Let's see. Ooh, this is spicy. Okay. Joel says, I think the green could be more undulating as a short par four. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I, I think the green slopes fit with what we were doing on the course so far, though. So I see what we're doing. The, the layup area here is, you know, almost blocking us out. It's forcing us to hit a draw. Um, we are quite a ways out for that, though. And I don't know about putting the waypoint back here. I, th I feel like the waypoint should probably be at driver length on the hole. Um, I think for a shorter hole, this tee shot makes sense. This is a bit much, though, to do three iron and then three wood um, to the green. I'd almost say that... Like, what, what I... T and it, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that this is the only way to do it, but what I use as a rule of thumb is I don't think the approach shot and par fives don't count Actually, no, I'm going to say par fives count. I don't think the approach shot should ever be a longer club than your drive. So if this was like three wood, three wood, I'd say, eh, but I, I could I could see it. I'd, I'd say that there's probably an argument to be made there. But the, the three iron into three wood is a bit much. Um, and same thing on a, on a, like a, on a par five. If you're forcing a layup with a three wood and then the, player has to hit like driver off the deck in order to um to get up there and have a shot at you know making the green in a reasonable um sorry I just had a complete brain fart there but yeah the I think you get what I'm saying with that um and then driver on this hole is almost like you can't hit it. Because um, I think anything through this... You're not forced to lay up here. I think you are forced to lay up, if I'm being honest. Because I just don't... I don't see how you hit that. <laughs> like... 295 driver. I like I can do it because I'm on no tempo, but if I'm on tempo, there's no way in hell I can hit this. Like even for most skill levels, I don't think they're hitting this. Um and then we're blocked out from the trees from hitting a kind of a cut into it, you know. And that's true too, Sroll. The the wind will have a huge decision. If you do have a tailwind, you can definitely carry it. I mean, yes, I, I can I can hit driver here. I, I think this is really, really forcing driver out of a lot of people's hands, though. Okay, I like the look here with the, the little cabin in the background there, or house probably a house um, I think the planting along the water looks nice um, it's a bit tall you know right up here but I mean the the grasses that you have to deal with getting them to render and all that that's you know um, I think the bunker could be a little bit more visible but, you know, overall, I think it works.
Pumpkin is a little spicy. <laughs> there was a path here. We had a path taking us from green to the next T. All right. Um, again, I like the, the T shot here. I think... Um, you know, the fairway's just kind of guiding us where to hit it, and I think it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Limited path allocation. <laughs> um, I would like to see, again, the planting behind the, the golfer over here. It's behind chat, but here, I'll move you guys again. Um, over there on the left. Um, I think, you know, this planting over here to the right looks really nice. I think the planting over here uh, looks like it might be um, either, like, splined trees or multi-planted or autogen or something like that and there's not really any undergrowth or anything where we have it on the right so you know i'd like to see that just balanced out a little bit um i love the look of the lake down the right hand side and um i i think there's a lot a lot to like about the, the look of this tee shot here oh this isn't okay i see what we're doing here this is interesting r5 I'm curious if I miss if I miss this tee shot you know let's say I miss left I have a shot down the fairway here to get a look at the green but if I miss this tee shot to the right I guess I'm probably laying up out to here but then I'm blocked out for my third shot I'd say I guess I'm trying to figure out kind of what we're doing with the the trees here. They're they're a little close to the inside of the the fairway here, and I feel like they could be maybe thinned out a little bit, um, and maybe just have like two or three trees. Go for that uh, uh, Gauzer Ranch 16 kind of feel where they have the the few trees that can kind of block you out from your approach, um, and you could even maybe bring this tree line down here on the right it doesn't have to be just a clear gap it just seems very binary trees here trees here and a clear gap cut through the center um we could maybe do like a couple taller trees here and bring the planting down in the middle and then go back up here so it's kind of a, a broken up gap to to shoot to shoot through here um but i like the whole design <laughs> you have given us a clear angle here but it is over the bunker avoid the trees on the left. Go. Right to left action. I like the look of the trees on the hill back there. It's always a nice look. Oh, and we made a putt. Look at that. We're finishing her up with a par three here. Oh, a nice look here too. I like this. Ooh, an interesting par three. Okay. Ooh, that pin is spicy. That pin is very spicy. <laughs> Seb says he's substituting an albatross for an ace. <laughs> uh, this is a nice this is a nice look with the lake in the background there. We have a little bit of room to work our way down to this pin. Probably hit nine iron. That still might not stay on the green. But we're gonna fade it a little bit.
Um, I know Nick asked the question earlier, and I, I'm not sure that he's here right now. But how would we route the rest of this 18 holes? Um, six is coming back down into there. So seventh T could maybe come out this way and head out that way. Um, but honestly, I would, a course like this, I would keep in this little river valley. Um, you know, a couple, you know, th maybe three more holes out there, or maybe two more holes out there, out and back, to complete our front nine, and then we maybe have another hole here that brings us back. Probably have to play with the river a little bit. Brings us pretty close back to the clubhouse, or we could just do an out and back routing. And then we play along the uh, the river on the other side as well, and just uh, you know play with some interesting land movement and uh, use the river in some more interesting ways. We make the putt. We made the putt. Awesome. So that was Rich NUFC. Design League 3.1 course. Good job there. I liked the uh, I I liked the planting. I would have liked to, I we you know we mentioned it in a few areas. I would have liked to see it be a little bit more consistent. Um, and then the one hole with the drive with the water. It just that that hole felt like th that drive felt like was it five at Whistling Straits where. It, it it just seems I want to use the word nonsensical but that's not really what it is I I just see like to see a little bit more space there but yeah thanks rich I, I appreciate you stopping by and uh, participating in in uh, uh, our first uh, design league prompt here all right up next is our friend Seb. Oh, let's, uh, let's do it. You did DL 3.1 as well, right? Sebic. Wind speed low. Set up around. We're gonna go from the blue. To, did you use, think Dominica? I'm very familiar with Dominica, Seb. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, did you use team manipulation? Is what I was getting at. Sorry, my brain is really slow right now. Blue. Okay. <laughs> Dominica Dominica I see what you were saying but here's here's the this was done in 10 hours 10 hours six whole course that's pretty quick that is pretty quick okay actually before I talk about the tee shot let's go look at the plot because I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna talk about the tee shot um, okay, this is neat. I like what we're doing. I can tell that we're doing a little, uh, ocean, a little bay, um, which, which is neat. I like, okay, you'd use Thailand, which is interesting. I would have expected, um, I would have expected Delta, but we didn't, we didn't, I assume we didn't want the sand. So this is uh, this is nice. We kept some of the default planting, which is fine, and then we added groups of tropical trees, some palms. Ooh, this is very bright. Again, the the render distance or the the LOD models for these grasses right there <laughs> look uh, goofy. I'm not a huge fan of these grasses. I think it's just a personal thing, though. Um, they might look better into the sun, though. 
And I don't know. <laughs> Delta feel on a Highlands plot. Yeah, because uh, you get the rock. And I think the rock makes a lot of sense here. So, yeah, that's neat. Okay, cool. Um, and I think the, the plot makes a lot of sense. I saw you did a beach over here as well. I think that, that that looks nice. And you'll definitely get some views of that. I saw it from the first tee. We got some houses. Um, I saw we have some sort of amphitheater, little camp. I don't know, a lodge. Is this like a music festival? <laughs> oh, concert venue. Okay, yeah, yeah. Clubhouse is big. Oh, Ed, that is quite large. Is this like a resort? Like a Caribbean resort? Oh, look at you. <laughs> that's some uh, that's some neat architecture there. Well done. It's one of the more unique clubhouses that I've seen. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so let's talk about this first tee shot. I think the, where this differs from the first uh, the first course that we played is that all of this is visible, so you have a nice view of of the tee shot. We it looks like we had to get the tees like smushed right up to the front of the the tee box to to get that view, um, but that's okay. 135 feet, it's a lot, but I I don't think that that's the end of the world. One thing that's throwing me off is that we have bunkers down here that's like you can see where they are but they're kind of hard to see i think these are actually because they're flat bottom right or supposed to be flat bottom they're a little bully but so i want to be right for this Ooh, okay that's spicy. Okay, I think the green makes a lot of sense. That if there's a back left pin there, that's that's brutal. Um, I can play I can play out to the left for this one now, and I have a lot of space. I do have to carry the bunker, but that's easy when I'm getting downhill 130 feet. Actually, I can probably carry that bunker, eh? Let's just smash this right. I have a tailwind and that bunker there. I ran 120 feet downhill, so I think I can carry that bunker <laughs> by, by a lot. Yeah. Got a pitching wedge in. So yeah, the green makes, makes a lot of sense for that distance. Are these are these are these what I think they are? <laughs> Seb Do you care to elaborate? <laughs> Don't tell Charlie. I think he went to bed though, so I think we're okay. Okay. Uphill par three. This, so visually, I feel like, I feel like this is missing something. Um, you know, the, all the, the, the hillside here with just the, the heavy rough on it, um, feels like it could use some sort of planting to fill it in a little bit. I know you only did it in 10 hours, so, um, I, I feel like there was some areas that we couldn't really do, like, detail work in. But I think some detailed, maybe rock work or some sort of planting to, to fill this in. Um, and maybe it, it could even partially obstruct this green, I feel like, because we can't really see it anyway. Um, oh, it's only 8 p.m. there? <laughs> maybe it's bath time. I don't know. <laughs> um, do we have a... Is this a, a path? Yeah, we've got paths. Okay. Is 
sacrifice Tillside. <laughs> I mean, the lighting isn't great over there, so that's fair. Um, but you know, even like when we're putting back up towards the hill, actually, it doesn't that doesn't look bad uh, with the rock and all that. But um, yeah, I don't know. I find myself wanting a little bit more with 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 the visual here, just because it's a par three, and I feel like I don't know. I feel like par threes should always be something visual because they're usually a way to kind of link to two two areas of the plot together. <laughs> um playability wise I think this this makes a lot of sense. I like the long narrow green. Um there's not a lot of trouble like right up against the green. I saw the bunkers left. And then um because it's uphill, you have that long shot that's gonna roll out a lot, so I think you've got a lot of hashtag ground game to work with here, which is pretty cool. I think playability wise, I think that worked. I, I think that, that that part three worked well. Hashtag entity. All right, a par five. Oh, you did one of my favorite par fives the with the knob right in the front of the green. I can run it in from the left side to get to that pin. The right side, I'd probably have to hit a big old draw. But I could probably make it in. Um, this one's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know why I would ever hit right You know, we've got the water in play there It the angles not as favorable um, I could see maybe Maybe if the pin was on the right Going to that right side, but even still I think I'd rather play this as a three shotter at that point or try to try to draw one in because the hole's not very long because even if I miss like if I miss left it this looks like it's gonna kick me back into the fairway and if I miss right I don't think I'm catching that bunker I, th I think that this is gonna kick me right over the top of the bunker or to the right short of it depending on the wind Stroke the knob for an angle in. <laughs> oh, I pushed it right. Okay, we'll see if this goes in the... Oh, well, there you go. Okay. <laughs> you sure showed me, Seb. <laughs> wah, wah. All right. Still gonna hammer one up here to the left. It still came out pretty far right. You me ah, what a lie. Um, when we were peeking at the green, the green looked like it made a lot of sense. Um, a, a lot of room to work with on it. And then we've got a runoff area with a, you know, collection area of fairway, so... See? I like the knob in the middle of the green. This is the hole that we had to sacrifice to the lighting gods. We can see the bunkers nicely. And one thing I like about the bunkers on like this hole um, in particular is the way that they stack up. 
you got the this angled bunker here that's kind of stacking there. Oh, hey, I just drug you guys off the screen. Don't know how that happened. But anyway, <laughs> we've got this bunker here that's uh, kind of sitting on top of itself and then these bunkers on the left that are stacking up. And they just kind of work their way up. Which visually I think looks nice. Um, it also very clearly tells us like kind of where to go. <laughs> see if we can bang one out here the landing area does feel really pinched like especially for 295 if you have a tailwind the drive becomes completely like there, there's no question what you're doing on it and into a headwind you might even be looking at the same thing where it's just like well this is going to be short of those bunkers anyway it's not really playing to an angle it's just you know it's kind of target Dare I say target golf. Uh, hitting to that little that little strip of fairway there. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, the the the, the decision is whether to lay up. And we're short. Okay. Playing. Partial splash, because no tempo. Partial splash, because no tempo. Go in the hole. Easy bogey. All right, hole five. Ooh, drivable four. Ooh. Is that OB? Perfect. Okay, it's not OB. Um, I like this a lot. So visually off here, like everything is just everything in front of me is just working its way up to this this point. Right where the green sits, um, and I think that that looks nice and makes a lot of sense. I'd like to see a little bit more planting in here to to frame the, frame out the tee shot a little bit. We just have a sea of green in front of us, but you know, <laughs> um, I really like just from for a, from a golf hole. You know, for a golf hole, I, th I think it looks I think it looks really nice. Um, I like this. Almost looked like two pieces of bunkers stacked on top of each other from the T2 and it looked um you know if I can hit this green which is good that's that's what I like about it. I think playability wise this hole makes a lot of sense too. I love just the massive runoff. I'm always a big fan of the drivable four where the miss is long. So you play back to behind the green and then your approach is the 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 shot back towards the T. It also can force people to become creative on their their T shots. Yeah, this is going to bunt left, I think. Yeah. Whoop. Okay. Um yeah, I think that's fair for trying to go for that. And then you have a you have a pretty straightforward layup, but there's still there's still, you know, bunkers to to navigate and things up there. But I like this. I think this is a really well constructed drivable for. Hey reteach. It looks like you got one of the subs that were uh, that were gifted earlier, so congrats on that. And we're finishing up with a five on this one. Playing back towards the clubhouse. Yeah, I like the look of that clubhouse. I, 
I'd say the planting, like some of this planting feels a little heavy handed. Like, I don't know about the palm being like buried in, in all those, those trees. But I do like that you did the undergrowth to, to make it feel very wild. And the flowers are a nice touch. They're not, you know, overbearing. Mm, that sculpting though. That sculpting is a little rough. <laughs> I only say that because I know you can take it. Um. I think you might know what I'm going to say about this green. But I feel like this green is sitting really close to number one fairway. <laughs> Um, I would almost argue that you could connect the fairway here or set this green further back to the right. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, I can't see this bunker and it's, it's just, it's bothering me. <laughs> I can barely make out the, the, the bunker's beard. The health insurance template. Okay, I love so this is I this is what the game gave me for my second shot. <laughs> Which I just love. We're up 30 feet, so there's no way in hell I'm making this. I think the, the even the light wind made it. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. Carry the bunkers to this layup area. It's still a nasty pitch over that ravine. I'd almost say that your nine iron here. Yeah, that leaves you full hundred yards in. That's probably the shot I'd go with. I don't I would don't know I would never hit over here. I don't know why the game did that. I didn't see your dare, Seb. <laughs> the landing spot for one. <laughs> Intended as a choice. If the pin is on the right side, maybe you take a three wood up. Yeah, I definitely, if the pin was right, I would definitely probably go for that shot. Um, well, I don't know. I'm still not getting there, though. So I don't know. You'd have to put it in front of me for you to make that decision. That is a spicy pin just sitting on top of the cliff right there. Oh, that didn't... Wow, okay. That was a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. Birdie. Okay, and before we do that, we were talking about how would we route 18 more holes around the plot. Um, I think we would make use of this land over here. If we could. Yeah, I think we could. I think you could possibly work with that. The other thing would be to play along the coast out here. You know, you, we've got a, We've got a, the par 3 right here. You could maybe go out in this direction before coming back to, to, to here. So you, there's a lot of land out here you can play with. Yep, go right after two. Yep, play along the coast, come back. There's probably a little bit more coastline we could use over here as well. Or not coastline, rather, but, um, you know, we could probably smooth out a little bit of land here. Get a lot of views, like having playing up on these cliffs and getting the views out over the bay. That seems very apropos for <laughs> for this plot. But yeah, 
That's uh, Seb's 3.1 course. Good job, Seb. Thanks for participating. You will... Um... <laughs> yeah, no problem, Seb. Um, you'll be receiving your participation trophy in the mail shortly. All right, up next is CG444 to the stage, please. Let's see. I love that you guys all named your course DL3.1. And then your name. <laughs> you made it very easy on me. <laughs> Come at me, Pat. There is a beach. Okay, Chris, you asked for it. I haven't crutched on it either. <laughs> right. T, white T. You made it very easy on me. Okay. I'm waiting for the one where, <laughs> where someone's like, oh, I put all of pin two's pins in the bunkers for me and my friends to play. <laughs> Ooh, you did do a beach. Wow. Look at that. Oh, and a little beached fishing <laughs> fishing boat. This is a confused lynx. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know where I would place this, but it looks cool. I feel like this is like, like somewhere in Western Australia or something. Ah, <laughs> yes, that one crashed. <laughs> this is very neat, very unique. I cannot believe how flat this is. Like in a in a good way. I'd imagine it might not have been that hard to do, but it still looks really good. Did we do? Oh uh, wait, is this double water plane? No, oh, the ocean levels right. What did you do? <laughs> Cause there's, yeah, the, it's not double water plane because this is the water level. Just doing goofy things. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not supposed to look out there anyway. I'm not judging you on that. <laughs> okay. I mean the plots, the plots very straightforward. Makes a lot of sense. Looks really good. Um. Those are neat. Okay, cool. All right. Let's see. Okay. So there's no, we have no trouble, no hazard out here. Cyril, I want to cut down those trees so bad. Um, they're not, I mean, they're not impeding on anything though. You know, I mean, I can, Damn near hit all the way over to here with a little draw. <laughs> yeah, they're preventing the shortcut down this fairway. Yeah. Which I could probably still do anyway. <laughs> but I'm not going to. Um, this is a nice look. I, I think because there's no hazards off the tee, I'd say the planting maybe could come down a little bit in, in these, these areas here. Um, but overall, I think that I, th I think they, it makes a lot of sense and, and looks nice.
All right. The, I, I, I know, I, I think I tend to give uh, the really dramatic lighting a lot of shit. Um, but I actually really like it here. And maybe it's because we haven't played into it. If we play into it, I might feel differently about it. But, um, ooh, that is a spicy green. <laughs> That's a spicy green for such a long asshole. <laughs> okay, everything's going right to left. Also, this is hard. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, but you left... I mean, you left a lot of space to miss. There's no bunkers, so... The death par four. Yeah, I mean... There's an argument to be made that this sh should maybe be a five, but... I, I honestly, like... There's so much... There's no, there's no danger around the green. Um... So this is this is like a, a par four and a half. It's a hell of an opener, though. The haze looks nice too. I like the way that pin just sits out there by itself. The danger is the green. <laughs> Stay on the green. Stay on the green. Okay. Whoa, <laughs> that was really close. I'd, I'd argue that maybe it's a, a touch much, but yeah, easy hole. <laughs> we'll see if we make the putt. I'd argue it's a touch much, but I I kind of like the hole. I, I really do. Okay, easy hole. Great hole. Great, great, great hole, Chris. <laughs> All right. Okay. I, I, I figured we were probably going to use the beach at some point for this tee shot here. Um... And that's not a bad thing. I, I think that this... Ooh, yeah, and that bunker is right where I want it. Okay, yeah. Okay, so this is the par five. Are we OB on the beach? Thank you for not making the beach OB. Well done. Yep. <clears throat> um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I, like, I like this hole a lot. This feels... Um... um is this a corn Crenshaw? Was that intentionally done, or is that just kind of what's happening? Because <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing right to stay right, or I can use, yep, yeah, or I can use all of this space over here. I have a nice layup to the left, and then I've got the, the pitch over the mound. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's everyone's favorite template. Um, obviously, I'm gonna actually, you know what? Because I wouldn't. I don't think I would normally take this. I'll play out to the left. I like the look off the tee. I think it looks really nice. Um, if, if I had to critique one thing about these cliff sides, I feel like that they're very abrupt. Like they're just straight down. Um, I feel like they could maybe be broken up with the sculpting a little bit. Um, like like it, the area right around the green here, I think this looks really good, right? Um, the area that we were teeing off earlier, over earlier looked like it was just very abrupt just straight straight cut straight down um so i think a little bit more of what we see near the green here would work. and then yeah i don't have as much of an angle from out here i honestly still do have the angle but yeah I don't know that I would go for this if I was playing with tempo. <laughs> yeah, we're we're bunker are I don't are we completely bunkerless? No, because we had the bunker on the T shot. We had the core and crenshaw bunker. Um I'm gonna actually play right down here because I wanna see how this plays. Sixteen feet. If I'm down at the bottom here, I think I can still make that. Uh, 
<laughs> yes, I, I know I missed Seb. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's a good, I think 16 feet's perfect for that. <laughs> it's like that back bunker, uh, what's the drivable for on, uh, Tanner's, on Tanner's World Cup course? I want to say it's hole 12, but, but the, it's like 16 feet down into the bunker behind the green. Uh... Oh, check out the clubhouse. You mean that? <laughs> That's golden. Let's do a little little drone shot of that. You are welcome. Um oh man, I wish Charlie was still here. Who Who did the uh the Who Dat Matt Award. Is Who Dat Matt the one that did who did the clubhouse in the uh uh did the trailer in the in the out in the desert? <laughs> I think it was last year's I wanna say National Treasure, might have been World Cup. Wow, yeah, okay, I really like this look playing back up into the trees here. Was it Petro? I don't honestly don't remember. I really like this look. I think this looks really nice. You can see the bunkers over here. Um, that's a spicy pin, though, if there's one, like, right here. Hmm. <laughs> yep. This pin is... This pin is spicy. I'd say maybe give us a little bit more space from that tree on the right there. Um, but I don't know. Ooh, yeah, this is a this is a spicy pin. Great hole, great hole, Chris. <laughs> yep, and then we get the nice shot back out of the trees. Um, I'd say, so this is just something I see right off the bat here. I'd say if we had a little bit more, I don't mind the trees being here, but I'd say let's, let's break up the, let's punch a few holes through here to get a little bit better view down to the coast and then maybe bring this planting down a little bit or the land down a little bit. Um, cause it does feel a little claustrophobic being back in the trees here. It's a cool look though. Like it, it's very clearly pushing the vision or pushing pushing the sight lines like out towards the 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 hole in front of you and drawing your eye out there um so i like the way that it does that um but this this looks this does look really good yeah can you see oh yeah is that six green down there oh yeah definitely yeah yeah absolutely open up that sight line to the the that green that'd be a cool one Oh, I love, I I love your whole designs here. I think that there's a lot to really like. Like this is very clear. Like we're playing to the left. We got the bunkers over here to get an angle at this pin. Again, this course is tough, um, but if you play it the way it you know it's asking you to play, um, there there's opportunities here. Um, also with the trees being this close on the right, I feel like it's kind of blocking us out from the, the safer option. Um, I think I would always hit to the left here though, so. That's the fifth fairway it's shared. Okay. That makes sense then. I mean, it's still the safer option, though. <laughs> yeah, this is great. I like this hole a lot. I think this is really well done. Um, the, an the angel probably matters less because of how short the approach is. Um, 
but honestly, like, this green side is just really cool. that Andre would be proud <laughs> got another diagonal carry Oh, this is five green down. Okay, is that what you said? Yeah, you said sorry, fifth green. The drivable four. Uh, yeah, I'm sitting here going, hmm. I could overpower this because I'm, you know, no tempo. And it's downhill. I mean, I'm gonna go for it, obviously. Um, you can play out to the right here. I don't know that I'm ever really laying up back here. I honestly, well, actually you do get a, better angle there. There's a lot to digest here. Yeah, you don't need overpower because it's downhill, yeah. Yeah. Um, three wood's probably the layup. Or you, and then you can just play further out to the right and it gives you a worse angle into this, this, <laughs> this green. with the shot actually bit up there the wind take it a little bit and then let that slope kick us left boink go on the green no <laughs> yep uh really well thought out the the hole does feel a little bit like the corn crenshaw we played but this is the opposite direction, so I'd say, you know, I think there's an argument to be made. I would hit driver to lay up way right is safe. Yeah, that it's it's a safe play out there. It's just your approach is this to the to that green. And I just don't know that that's the play I'd want to be making. And we're going over the bound. This do, this still feels like a drivable court in Crenshaw, if I'm being honest. Um This one it was Crenshaw. <laughs> it works really well. I I think again it's a really well thought out hole. And seeing them, oh, okay, nice chip, um, nice par. Okay, uh, seeing them, <clears throat> you know, see, seeing both of those holes on the same course, I don't think I'd be upset about. Okay. This is really cool. Another really great look. I, the 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 thing that I really love about the look of all this is it's it's very simple, and it works really well. I think for that. Um, you know, we just have a sea of sand out to the left, but I think, like, it's a beach. It makes sense. And then we just have the one path, you know, meandering through it. And then to the right, we have the more busy planting. Um, it's... But but it's done... It, it's, it's... Yes, it's busy planting, but it's done with literally, like, one shade of grass color and then the bushes sitting in it. And I, I think it works really well. The simplicity of, of everything going on here, I think, works really well together. I like the stairway down. It isn't a very safe stairway. <laughs> Let's look real quick before we... Oh, good lord. <laughs> Maybe we should have put a lift in here instead. <laughs> They're cool, though. I like the stairs because they draw... Again, they draw your eye from, like, down to the beach. Like, p paths do such a good job of, of that. Okay. 
You wanted an ace, Seb? Maybe, maybe, maybe? Not enough. <laughs> well, no tempo ace. Um, real quick, yeah, in case I, you know, in case I actually make this putt. Uh, what I would do here, um, I would use a little bit more of this coastline uh, to extend this out. You know, maybe if we could fit a par three down over here and a par four down the other side, and then um, go with the stacked routing where we have one hole inland and one one hole uh, right on the coast there. Zane, I can't do a flip. I'm not playing the right game to do a flip. <laughs> um, this is really cool. I really like this. Um, and then, I, yeah, I would come inland a little bit more as well. I, I really liked what we did with with these two holes here. What was this? Three and four. So playing up into the trees a little bit. I think that makes uh, would make a lot of sense here. <clears throat> Great part. That's the confused Link's nature. I don't know that to me that course didn't feel very confused. Like it was very, it was very clear and concise and again the simplicity of everything I just think I, I think it all worked I think it worked really well I think you did a great job on that um, I would love to see that concept um, I'd love to see you take that concept to a full 18 holes whether it's that that one or uh, um, whether it's that plot or, or a, another one um, that's you know more fleshed out but um, yeah great job All right, next up is Irish Golf. Uh, um, well, 3.1. Well, 3.1 Irish Golf. Black tees, I assume. In two. Let's go for a rip. Hmm. Wind turbines. Okay, are we in autumn? Looks like we're on... Howdy. There's a lot of colors happening here. Um, someone help me out. I don't know if this is harvest or autumn. I want to say harvest. I just built a course in autumn and this doesn't look like autumn to me. Although these are a lot of the uh, autumn trees, but I'd imagine they share them. I think it's harvest. I think it's harvest too. I'm no expert on the subject though. I think I might be. We got a little rail action going on here. Oh, is this how we get from the No. Okay, I was thinking maybe that was how we got from the end of the routing to the beginning. Back down and then take the little rail car up. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into the colors here in a, in a second. Um... I'm curious, we have this nice uh, river that we built, 
but we don't play around it or near it. Nice creek and pond going in here. It's planting. All right, let's uh, let's take a peek. Um, right off the bat, it is very cloudy, so it's uh, it's dark. You know, it but it doesn't look it doesn't look terrible. It, it might be helping because the the autumn trees are like those are very bright. <laughs> Or the harvest trees. Um, so another really far downhill tee shot. What's interesting is the hole is only 25 feet downhill, but the tee shot is 60 feet downhill. Um, so we're going to play down and back up again. Um, I think this hole is doing a good job of kind of grabbing your eye in the landing zone and then taking it off up to, up to the left there. I would say that maybe this tree here doesn't need to be there because it is blocking our view of the the green a little bit where I feel like you could probably leave it open in this case um, <clears throat> see I like that we have uh, some space out here for the the hole to breathe the green oh green makes uh, green slopes make a lot of sense I feel like we have a um, We have an angle to this green that's preferred uh, from the left side. So I want to challenge the inside of the dog leg here. I'd argue that these bunkers on the right hand side probably don't need to be there. Visually they look okay. Um, but playability wise, I don't I don't think they're necessary. But overall, I think the whole design makes sense. Um, these bunkers in the back, because we're going so far uphill, uh, the bunkers in the back are a little blind. <laughs> but it's... Um, it's not a bad look to the kind of plateau green. Downhill here. Yeah, uh, the green slopes made a lot of sense. I think the again the whole design makes makes uh, makes sense there. Um, again, it's still really dark, and the the planting just feels like it's kind of default autumn. I I'd, I'd like to see more sort of fleshed out planting. Like, I even see a yellow willow back there. Is yellow willow a default? Um... Yeah, this is definitely harvest. Yeah, because the yellow willow is a default harvest tree. Yeah, I'm not I'm not crazy about the, the harvest autogen planting if I'm being honest but I think I think what you've done looks nice like you know the rock work down here I don't know about the gorse bushes with the autumn theme autumn usually feels <clears throat> at least to me you know doesn't feel like flowers um or if it is flowers it's like white flowers because it's like um you know the thistle in in, in bloom type of thing things going to seed um But I like the I like the yellow bushes with the the grasses and the pines down here. I think that that look works. So if you took that and and went through the rest of the the plot with that a little bit more, um, I think that that would look nice. I'm just gonna try to drop a six iron. This pin is really tight in the front of the green there. It's not really a spot to run it on. There's a putt.
Ooh, there we go. Okay. That's got a nice look. Um, yeah, T shot here. <clears throat> I think makes a lot of sense. I think it looks fine. I, again, the planting, um, it's not doing a whole lot for me in terms of um, interest. It's just, it's default harvest planting. Um, also, with all of this grasses, with all these grasses and everything, uh, they don't render well um, at a distance, as you can tell. And I think, I hope I've been playing on Ultra this whole time. Yeah, and I'm on Ultra. So those grasses, um, instead of multi-planting them, would probably be better served being um, single planted blown and blown up a little bit to, to improve the render distance on them. As you can see, like when I zoom in, they're there, but out here, because of the contrast, they, they're just very jarring. Um, but again, I appreciate the space that you've left between the planting. Um, the, the bunker here makes sense with the, the angle uh, and cutting the, the, the dog leg there, so. The cart path looks wonky. Oh, I didn't even see the cart path there. Yeah, I think it's just a... a I think it's just supposed to be kind of a natural pathway. But I'd argue that maybe you don't even need it at all. Uh, Reteach, yeah, the <clears throat> grasses... Oh, I'm going to be in the bunker. Um, overcooked that a little bit. The grasses, yeah, some some grasses render better from a distance, and then um, when you blow up the grasses, they also render better from a distance. So what I would typically do, yeah, exactly. The bright, like the flowers, tend to 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 render at a distance. Um, and just on a side note, as I see the sun coming out, <clears throat> um, you know, the hole looks really nice. And I think the grasses, again, look really nice with the sun out. Um, but the default planting is just really, really bright. It's very bold. It's like ketchup and mustard almost. Um, but going back to the grasses, um, the grasses that render better at a distance, you just kind of have to go through and, and plant them and kind of see which ones. But yeah, the flowers tend to tend to render better and the bigger grasses. And then when you blow them up, they do too. So so what I typically would do is um, if I set my camera back on the tee and then put a f uh, grass out in uh, maybe the landing area and blow it up until I can see that grass, that's about the distance that I would want or that's about the size that I would want those grasses to be. So I would go find a place on my plot where I could plant that grass at that size and kind of use that as a template to blow up the grass um, <clears throat> and then mul or single plant all those grasses and then copy and paste them, if that made any sense at all. It's kind of hard to explain, but... Yeah. So we're out of the bunker. This will come right a little bit. Then we've got the wind. on the green yeah no problem uh yes uh at, yeah adam's absolutely right as well the <clears throat> uh if you layer your planting uh which which is something that ben talks about a lot uh if you layer your planting the trees down to the bushes down to the grasses um it it makes it less distracting <laughs> Same. The hill on the left with the autumn red trees needs more rock formations. It leaves your position expo exposed to sniper fire. <laughs> you know, I hadn't really considered that, so that's a really good point to uh, to consider. <clears throat> so our fairway shape feels a little uh, kind of all over the place here. And I get that it's kind of following the natural terrain. <clears throat> um, 
However, what I was looking at was kind of this this area right right in here, um, where it kind of cuts in and then co comes back out. You can see it, but visually, you would typically want to see something like this go straight across because it's not a really a visual carry. So we would bring this fairway <clears throat> all the way across here, and, and you could leave the bunker down here. Um, but that's, you know, just kind of a thought there. Um, the bunkers that are cutting in there, you know, they, I think they make sense. I don't know that you need a bunker on the outside there, but visually, I, it, I think it works. <clears throat> um, pretty short par five. Yeah, I hadn't even looked at that yet. Six. Why is this giving us... Four eighty one. This must be from the waypoints. <clears throat> I don't know where the waypoint is for. Oh, is that just because it's not? I, that's right. I don't think that. That doesn't actually give us the scorecard distance, right? Yeah, that's why. <clears throat> Forgot about that. I don't know why. So yeah, it says four eighty one, but it's actually five. 540 something, which I think is appropriate. It's just because of the dog leg. Yeah, it's as the crow flies. Because <clears throat> now we've got three iron in, which I think is appropriate. Hey, Cryo. Seen you around the rookie design. I think Amy will be streams. Yep, I'm over there a lot. <laughs> Watch your sim golf fod. Awesome that you're doing playthroughs of Design League as well. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I'm enjoying this uh, this quite a bit. Um, thanks for uh, thanks for stopping in, and I'm glad you caught the uh, the sim golf fod. That uh, <laughs> I'm thinking about doing some more of that. The sim golf is uh, is a lot of fun. Um. Anyone heard anything on rookie results? No, nothing on rookie results yet. The last we update we got is the the last I've heard. I I assume they've got to be really close at this point. All right, nice kick right. I deserved that. Results are in. Not sure when they'll be made public. Okay, good to know. I assume it's soon. I know Patrick's got a lot of going on. He just finished up World Cup, and uh, he's still got a newborn at home. So that <laughs> that hasn't. I assume that hasn't changed. So. <clears throat> All right. Uh, this planting here on the right is a little close. Um, but again, I mean, the whole designs <clears throat> uh, might be a little simple, but they make sense. You know, we've got the bunker, again, protecting the, the inside of the sort of dog leg. Although the preferred angle here... Actually, I'm going to think... I think I'm going to go back on my word. The preferred angle here is going to be out to the left. Right? I don't want to just be shorter and play from the right there. Um, so I'd argue that you actually want to play out to the left here where there's no danger anyway. So maybe some fairway camber here. Although it doesn't work with the land movement. Or um, maybe just some bunkers out here. <clears throat> and maybe even extending the fairway out a bit. You'd have to cut back the planting, but... Definitely be in for watching some more sim golf. Cool seeing people continue to barely keep it alive throughout the years. I'm playing it this week, actually. Been sick with COVID. That's no good. Need a comfort game. Yeah, I've played that, like, I mean, my whole life. So that's definitely a, definitely a comfort game. It's it's It can be hard to uh, get running sometimes, so I get why not a lot of people play it, though.
let's roll you judged. Oh, okay, you judged, you judged rookie. Yeah, I noticed that um, it didn't seem like feedback was something that was being uh, offered for rookie, which I was surprised by because I kind of thought, like judging notes are usually a big part of the design competitions. Um, and it's like, it's rookie, right? I would think feedback would be, would be really important to newer designers. Ooh, this pin is a little spicy, especially because everything's running off the green here. If I'm up here, um, this putt is very spicy. Now it's not an illegal pin. I'd just argue that compared to the rest of the course, that pin is quite spicy. The look here isn't bad. I can see all the, the bunkers down by the green. I'd say you could maybe, I mean, you don't, well, because of the length of the hole, I feel like uh, a little bit of fairway apron here with a little bit more run on space would be nice. But it is quite a bit down hill. See if that's yeah, that's about the right club. No. My chat's not updating for some reason. There we go. You still have your CD of it? I don't know where my CD of it is. I'm sure it's long gone by now. No CD patch. Managed to get the old install of it off. Of okay. It's nice. Yeah, I know you can download them on um, some of those old gaming websites. Okay. Oh, that was hole six. Um, I missed the the uh, going back out, but from from the original routing or from the original plot that we looked at, um, incorporating that that large lake or, or river that we had uh, out there, I think would be exactly what I would do with, with that plot. And I don't know if you were planning on doing that and that's why it was out there. Um, but you know, we had that neat feature <clears throat> and I felt like we didn't really take advantage of, uh, take advantage of it. Other than that though, I thought that, you know, a lot of the land movement made sense. Uh, the whole designs made sense for the most part. Um, it's just that planting that I felt was, um, just you know it, it's the generic harvest planting and i don't know that it looks that great to begin with and then um it, it doesn't really have a unique feel to it so that would be kind of where i would start on uh, uh kind of improving the visuals on that but um, overall i think you did a good job and um uh, look forward to seeing you know some more of your your, your work in the in the future so um, you know thanks for participating and um I, I think you did. Uh, I think you did a good job. All right. So that was Irish Wolf, or I'm sorry, Irish Golf. Sorry, we have a lot of <laughs> golf wolves and Irish wolves and Irish golfs. All right. Next is. Let me make sure. I'm. I always forget. Is it Mister? It's Mr. Haybai. I think I said it wrong earlier. Uh, Mr. Haybai is up next. And his is named Captain's Daughter. So we've got one T to choose from. Pin two. That goes for me too, Sroll, by the way. Um, if you have, if you at any point judged um, my course, which um, if if by chance I somehow made the top five, I'd imagine that I think all the judges would have judged all the courses then, so. Um, but um, yeah, if you have any judging notes for me, I'd, I'd love to get them from you as well. I've got my feedback for you on Tacopi. Shit. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate that from a fellow competitor.
you didn't see mine until later. I know with the way the groups and everything worked that they it was possible to, that some judges would have never seen certain courses. Right. Captain's Daughter <clears throat> by Mr. Haybai. Alright, so we are in Highlands, it looks like. Yep, Highlands. We've done some sparse pines planting, which actually looks quite nice. got these nice uh, hills or mountains out here to, to work with. This is nice. It has a very uh, kind of spaced out feel that I think works. I'm interested to see how we, we take advantage of that with the, the routing and golf stylistically. Got a little <clears throat> bit of a village in the works down here. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the golf. Okay. Oh, we are quite narrow. Okay. Um, let's see. We're on a 518 yards down 50 feet. We're taking this is this plays about 500 yards. But I feel like. This feels very narrow for how long this hole is. Um, you know, I'm, I'm playing on no tempo, but as soon as I turn tempo on, uh, there's probably very little chance I hold this, or I hit this fairway, uh, just as, you know, an average player. Um, I mean, this looks like it might be 18, 20 yards wide. Um, You've left us space for a three wood, which I appreciate. I think it makes I, I think it makes sense for a shorter hole, but if I'm laying back, ooh, that's a tiny green too. We'll get to that in a second. Um I have to go back to here. If I'm laying back to three wood, I have Well let's see, I'd be what, two forty five or well, a little bit longer because it's downhill. I, I still have two hundred and sixty yards in and that's I I'm basically at three wood, three wood on a par four. Um <clears throat> Which, judging by this green complex, that's just way too, way too long. Um, so, what I'd like to see on a hole like this is, is I don't mind challenging driver. <coughs> I do think we are really pinching off the landing zone here by having it only, you know, 18 or so yards wide. Um... The idea is that, you know, we should be making the green in in two. We're not trying to protect par here. Or I would hope I hope we're not. Um, again, I'm no tempo, so I'm gonna hit the fairway. And this this green is very small. <laughs> um It's also We're also completely blind. Which, I can make out the top of the flag stick, but we have all this hazard here to the left that we can't, we can't see and make out. Um, and I and I hit probably as ideal of a shot as you could on the hole. So I would feel I should be rewarded with a little bit better look into this green. Um, the, I like the bunker complex, if I'm being honest. I just think that this is designed for a much shorter hole. Um, <clears throat> with all that being said, I, I really actually like this environment with the kind of sparse pine trees and just these grasses coming in. I think they look nice. Uh, it looks like you used some sunken cashmere elms. Yeah, I think those are the cashmere elms sunken down. Um, 
I, I'd say our surfaces are a little bit uh, <clears throat> a little bit rough here. I think we could smooth out the surfaces a little bit. I like that we have some extra space around here, but honestly, I think this could almost all be green um, and just have one, one green back here. Let's see if we can... This green will accept us, which it will. And again, I'm on no tempo. I'm going to make that shot 10 times out of 10. <clears throat> the green is um, the green slopes. I think are fine for how small the green is, but again, I just think they would they would make more sense on a shorter hole. <laughs> and everything is, you know, with, with the planting and the environment feeling as big and open as it is, I just feel like the golf should f kind of fit that and feel more wide open as well. Yeah, this is, again, this is a really small green, um, especially for how long the hole is. Um, <clears throat> it looks, this this look off the tee is actually really nice. Um, I, I like the way the green kind of sits back there behind the planting. Um, <clears throat> I just feel like we're really, really tight with, with, our, um, with our surfaces and not really allowing any room for error. see I think I can just kind of go straight at this <clears throat> what states did you guys get I'm finishing up my research on Oklahoma <clears throat> could be tough Oklahoma will be interesting troll got South Carolina I got Alaska I've started working on that which has been a, a lot of fun Okay, we made a putt. We made a birdie. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Yeah, again, this look. I think this look is fine. I don't know about the dead pine trees. Um, I feel like with everything being as spread out as it is, they wouldn't be as, I guess, common. But, you know. Alaska should be easy. Mostly just bears all over the course. <laughs> Uh, bears and moose, actually, yeah, a, a moose in every a moose in every river. Yeah, uh, okay. So the the look here off the tee, um, I I feel like we should have like an expansive fairway in in front of us. I really appreciate the um the the extra width that we've been allowed on this hole. <clears throat> This hole's a lot shorter, though, um, so I'm not entirely sure why we're allowing so much more width on this hole versus the last one. Um, so I would just be mindful of that. And again, I, th I think a lot of this could be opened up, and especially going up towards the green there. You know, if I miss the fairway and have to lay up into into this area right in here, um, I don't think I should necessarily be as punished as hard for it. So I, I think a lot of this could be could be opened up. Um, I realize we're down quite a bit, so this this bunker to the right here could be a run-in bunker, and I think that makes a lot of sense. But I think just opening up the fairway all along the left side here, um, <clears throat> we're obviously trying to protect that left side. But this this here, I'm not I'm not hitting a ball into. I'm never going to challenge this tiny strip of fairway. Um, this is all downhill, so I could just blast it over this this bunker. Mies, Musai, or Musin. What is Isn't it just Moose? Oh, get up there. Okay, well, we ended up taking on the bunker. <clears throat> Wind was a little too much. Let's get it back there. So we're going to be rough. A couple clubs for that. And then a third for the elevation and... Yeah. <clears throat> Again, the greens are really, really tiny. Um, what I would recommend doing is if you, if you have a, uh, an idea for, um, 
the type of course that you want to do uh, look up some examples of that in real life and kind of measure out what the green sizes are um, typically you know you would see something that's uh, maybe <clears throat> 40 yards by 30 yards or um, you know on, on a smaller scale maybe 30 by 20 or something like that um, these are um, th these feel like they're maybe I mean 20 yards deep yeah a little over 20 um, and and not really any any wider I mean we're probably 12 yards deep in this area <clears throat> and then yeah uh, CG mentioned in chat there um, using the spline lengths 90 to 120 yards yeah is, is a good rule of thumb <clears throat> absolutely that hundred yards length um, is usually really is is really good And our bunker here is <clears throat> really encroaching on the green surface here. You'll see that it's starting to pull down the the green here. <coughs> Excuse me. It's starting to pull down the green here into the bunker. We don't. <clears throat> we usually we usually don't want to start seeing that. Um, you want to give the bunker a little bit of room to breathe. Um, and uh, you know, assuming we have a pin here. Um, there's really no, I mean, there, there's a little bit of a play because we have a helping slope, but it's so close to that bunker that um, I, I think it's just a little bit, a little bit too much. Please don't die on stream, yeah. <clears throat> I'll do my best. Okay. Ooh, what are we? Okay, so we've got a drivable where the layup is <clears throat> six iron. And it's all blind. Um, <clears throat> I'll be honest. I don't. I don't mind the dramatic the dramatic land that we've got going on here. Um, I'm just not sure about the whole design. <clears throat> we have a blind fairway that we can't we can't even really see it up here. Um, and we're only hitting six iron to it, which is leaving us. I mean, it's probably only leaving us like 120 yards in, but I honestly can't see a reason that I'd ever lay up on this hole. Um, the only thing I can see is the green way out there. <clears throat> and I'm going to try to partial driver this, I think, 10 out of 10 times. The The only real hazard out here is the, the land movement. Um, and I guess if you're off the back there, it's a hell of a... A hell of a shot back up. Um... Like, like I said, I'm, I mean, I can hit partial driver or I can just hit a big old cut into this and probably hold it. But even if I'm playing with tempo, I don't think I'm, again, ever not going for this green. This pin is also very spicy. <laughs> um, and we've mentioned it before, but the greens are, I, I th the greens as a whole are just I, I think they're scaled down too too far. I'd like to see a little bit more space there. Okay. Four, five. I think we have some baseline hole design things that that we understand here and that are working um there's just some pieces we need to we need to flesh out um for example this whole landing area over here um 
it is blind off the tee. I guess that's not really what you're aiming for, so it's it's probably more of a gift to the player than anything. Um, but we do have some trees that kind of block you out. I guess they don't really impede your shot, though, so... I don't have too much to complain about with them. Again, I like the I like the openness off these tees, and I, I like the planting um, as a whole. I just I wish the course kind of felt like it fit with everything going on on the plot. Again, I a little bit more width, a little bit more expanse to work with. Um, you know, we have a lot of camber here that's that's kind of protecting this already, and this this like this is there's a lot of width here. But for some reason, we have three wood kind of pinched off where I feel like we could just open up this left-hand side all the way and just let it open. <clears throat> you know, if we have a preferred angle from the right here, which it looks like we do, um, you know, you're using camber to protect that. So to try to hit up to here, your ball's going to end up pretty much in the middle of the fairway anyway if you're challenging this right-hand side. Um, another thing, too, is these bunkers feel like they're fighting the land in that they're just kind of sunk into the the ground really deep. Um, they don't really kind of sit here uh, naturally, if that makes sense. Like we kind of come up the fairway here to a peak and then we come back down on the right-hand side. So we're just gonna play all the way out to this right-hand side, and try to get for that angle. Yeah, so that's pretty much the play there. And then we've got, yeah, we've got the camber that we're playing with here from right to left. And I'm just going to hit a subtle draw into this. There we go. Okay. And I like the green side. I, I like, um, I like what we're doing here. Um, again, I would just like a lot more a lot more space for this green. Um, and the green slopes are kind of hard to judge just because of, of how small the green is. But again, for the size of the green, I think they make sense. Um, I would just like to see all of that basically just scaled up though. <clears throat> So I like this diagonal carry that we're doing here. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. Again, the weird uh, the the weird fairway sh shapes here, just uh, spline that straight through and just open open this up to the left here. If if you know you if you're giving us this left hand side, just just give it to us. There's not really any reason to cut it off. Um, also, this fairway I hadn't really looked at on any of the other holes, but this fairway starts really far out. Um, and I think something that would help with the, the, the width and just, again, vast, like, it make the, the golf course feel bigger and fill in the space a little better is to have the fairway start a lot closer. Like, 150 yards out, I feel like you could get away with here and just make all this fairway back here. Um, visually, it'll help out a lot, and from playability standpoint, it doesn't, it doesn't help the golfer necessarily in terms of, um, you know, playing the aggressive player um so it, it doesn't hurt you in any way to, to to do that um i do like the tee shot though kind of how much do i want to bite off to get into this plateau up here on the right i'd like to see the green kind of favor that angle as well um it just looks like it i can kind of play wherever out here um because of the dog leg it's going to be a touch shorter but I can really take the safe approach out here and have a really good angle in still. I might not be able to see it. I might be blind. Yeah. I'd be blind. But uh, the angle really isn't isn't bad. There we go. <clears throat> Got a pitching wedge in. And we're on hole six here. So um, other ways I would play with the routing is um, I'd probably try to make my way down towards that coast out there because we only have the six holes here. They're spaced out 
uh, quite a bit. And yeah, uh, honestly, just filling in the space with the holes that we have and then trying to do that a little bit more uh, with some, some more golf holes. Playing down towards the coast and then back in. The lighting here is kind of iffy. Not sure if we discussed that yet. Um, I mentioned it when we first came into the plot. I actually, I actually like the, um, I actually like the lighting. I don't, I don't think it's hurting too much. Um, I know it's a little dull, but I don't think every, I, I really don't think every golf course needs to have dramatic in-your-face lighting. I think that that gets boring <laughs> real quick. Um. So, I, I'm. I would defend I would defend this lighting. I, I really like um, I really like it and I think it fits this environment. Mr. Haybuy, welcome to chat. You weren't stoked with the lighting? Well I'll I will i i mean, like I said before, I'll I'll defend the lighting. I, I do I, I don't think it's bad. I I, I like it. I, I think it's very consistent. Um, you know, when the sun comes out, it doesn't feel like it's super bright. And it feels like when the sun goes behind the clouds, it's not super dark. It's not just like blacking out all the, the planting and stuff like that. I, I think it has a nice feel to it. <laughs> That's okay. You can always catch the VOD, but I'll give you the I'll give you the rundown right now. Um, I really liked the plot and how open it felt, um, and I actually liked the planting, the sparse pines. Um, it felt it felt unique, and I, I thought that it it worked really well with the Highlands uh, theme. Um, the only thing I was a little critical of was the the golf felt like it didn't fill in the space that it had. Um, and it, it was really narrow at times. Um, <clears throat> and I just felt like we could have just opened it up and, and allowed the, the golfer to kind of pick where they wanted to play from out there. And it, it visually it would look really, uh, it would look really nice too. And then the greens were really, really small. Um, the, the greens just felt like they could have been, uh, scaled up almost double their size. But... Overall, I, I think uh, you know some of the golf holes made sense. Um, I wasn't sure about the drivable four, but um, you can you know again go back and watch the the vod for kind of my thoughts on that. But overall, I think you did a really good job. Uh, it's it's a plot design challenge at the end of the day, and I actually really liked the plot um, and and the planting. I I thought again the simplicity there. Uh, I, I think it worked. Um, and I'll defend I'll defend the lighting. It, it might not look good on stream too. I'm I'm not sure how it how it looks for you guys. Um, but yeah, overall, I think, I think you did a, I think you did a good job there. I think I've said that about every course, but there hasn't been any, like, really, I haven't seen anything offensive. <laughs> so that was Captain's Daughter by Mr. Haybai. And, uh, we're on to our last, our last course of the day. Which is pretty good. We're at uh, what? It's been two and a half hours. So thanks to, uh, for those of you who uh, who stuck around for the majority of the playthrough today. I appreciate that. Was testing small greens okay? I I, I do appreciate that you left space around all the greens. Um, they just they just felt really small. Didn't feel great on it though, so I agree. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, so uh, our last course of the day is ABPG1812 with DL... Whoops, as I went back into... Great look off the first tee there. <laughs> um, let's...
let's see here. Deal 3.1. New club. So we're gonna white tees and pin two. Blue wins. All right. Last course of the day. ABPG one eight one two. Ooh, with the lighting in the face off the first tee. Let's take a look at the plot. So we are in Boreal. Where am I? Got a little bit of water back here. It looks like we're playing around. But other than that, we don't have a whole lot. We don't have a whole lot going on with the plot. So let's see how we use what we've got. So right off the bat, the lighting is, I mean, personally, it's a bit much for me. Um. It does give you a really dramatic look um, off the tee. But as soon as we turn around, we, you know, it that lighting's gone and even playing from the side. So, you know, playing just directly into the sun off the first tee, um, it, it might get you that look you're looking for for that one shot, but uh, overall, it doesn't. I, I don't think it holds up. So I can see. We have a layup. Driver. It's interesting. So we're protecting the outside of the fairway and the right side of the green. And then we've got this tree here as well. I can get kind of a fade though. God, I'd say I could almost go for the green here. Now I'm definitely blocked out by the pines. We're gonna try to just cut off the side of the dog leg here. I feel like there could be something maybe protecting that. So the safer play would be to play to the, the right hand side here. And then maybe that bunker doesn't need to be there. Um, you'd, you'd have to bring back some bunkering to kind of visually show that there's hazard there. The wind is going to take us through the fairway a little bit, which is okay. You know, we're on almost a drivable. Um, the surfacing here. Um, I, I feel like we could flesh out the these corners a little bit and bring the, the surfacing, the splines together to just let them kind of feather out. Um, the 90 degree angles is a bit, a bit abrupt. Up. Pitch. Pitch. <laughs> there we go. The green does feel a touch on the small side, but if we stick to that sort of size, I could see you kind of justifying that. Okay. Um... Let's see what we're doing with the green. Okay, let's talk about let's talk about um, split tee shots. Um, typically, what you want to use a split tee shot for is to give is to give the golfer options, but this almost feels like it's 
giving options for the sake of options. Oh, CG, thanks for stopping by. Have a good night. Um, so when when we look at a hole like this, it feels like we're we are favoring the right hand side a little bit. Um, but because we're just we have all these bunkers here, it doesn't feel like there's really any benefit to playing to one side over the other. Um, it just feels like a 50-50. Um, I'd, I'd almost prefer the hole without the fairway. I, I, I would say the fairway on the left. I think it the fairway out to the right would make a lot of sense. And then you could play into this green from the right-hand side here. Um, it just feels like we're really splitting up the hole with how far right and left we're, we're offering. Um, typically, you, you you just want some sort of risk reward, and I, I feel like all we're really doing with this one is giving us a dog leg right and a dog leg left. So I'm going to play out here to the right. Then I've got the 9-iron in. And then we also have the big runoff on the back, which I don't mind. I appreciate that it's there. Um, that almost makes the left side more favorable if it's a back pin position over there. Um, because you'll have space to work with here, and then you get the runoff on the back. Um, although, because of this spine in the green, it really does feel like the right. If I had to pick a side to say this is the favorable side, it'd be the right side. Which... The left side being as narrow as it is, then makes the left side almost never an option, right? If the left side was opened up more, um, so it's a safer shot over there, then you could play out to the left side for a safe shot, but then you have a more challenging approach. Or you could play out to the right and challenge the bunker and that dog leg um, to have a little bit easier approach shot in. You know, so there's kind of a give and take. There's a, there's a risk reward. Um, on the green, though, I did like that uh, that spine we had that kind of uh, ran down the green there. Um, it definitely made it an interesting um, shot from over the, on that left side. Okay, so we're using retaining walls. Manatee, you're back. <laughs> yes, you're a sub now. No, it's all good, Jack. We've been having fun. So, um, you know, if you want to, you can always catch the VOD, or I, I, I know you'll be playing the courses too, so you'll have, you know, your own opinions. Um, we are on APBG 1812, um, or 1812, his course, which is uh, New Club. And you. So from the T here, um, we can't see any of this this water short. And I feel like there there's a couple of reasons why. The, the fairway... Um, up here at 100 yards is sitting up kind of high, so it's blocking the, the view of the water, and so is the planting. So if we brought this land down a little bit uh, to give us a little bit more of view of the pond, um, that'd be kind of nice. Also, I, I, I really don't think we need this fairway short here. Um, honestly, this hole, could it's short enough that it could probably do without fairway at all. Um, if you wanted to do a little apron over here, I wouldn't criticize you for it. Um, but if you got rid of this fairway short, you could even bring the pond back towards the tee. Um, just kind of expand it back this way. That way you can see it a little bit more. That way visually you can, you know, make out what's happening in front of the green there. Um, the retaining wall, it's... I mean, it's a little tall, but as far as retaining walls go, I, it looks fine. So, you know, I'm not going to... I'm actually curious as to how you 
pulled that off. Because that retaining wall is quite tall. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, but it does it does look fine. Um, and there's there's no playing short of it. So I, I think it, you know, playability-wise, I don't think it causes any issues. Um, unless you somehow ended up, like, right behind here. But that's kind of just a freak shot. Um, but yeah, as Jack said in chat, um, or Manatee, um, the green site looks nice, actually. I like the way the sun kind of filters through the trees onto the green. Again, I know some people hate the the tree or the trees shadows on the green but I, I really don't mind them I think they look nice um, challenging little par three there but um, I didn't mind it I thought it was nice okay this one 471 so this is a long par four for what we're doing with the, the green here. So there's a couple of things on this hole. Um, Width-wise, it feels a little narrow, but I think this is about as narrow as I would go, so I'd say you, you could probably get away with that. Um, I'm not sure why the fairway ends as soon as it does. There's This is just a bunch of flat land that's just mown into rough. I would say take the fairway all the way up to the creek. That way you have a, a landing area up there. Um, let's go ahead and hit our tee shot. It, it's it's a little hard visually to see where the hole is going. Um, so if there was some planting in here um, along the left-hand side and right-hand side that kind of made it feel a little bit more filled in, uh, that would kind of help guide our eyes towards the playing surfaces. But let's go ahead and hit our tee shot here. Um, again, the water's a little blocked, but the planting here makes it a little bit more visible. Um, so I think there's an argument to be made that, you know, you, you can visually tell that it's there. Uh, this is what I'm talking about with all the rough, though. Uh, we have all this rough up here that I feel like just bring the fairway up. It's not you're not really helping anyone by having to lay up there. Um, it's only hurting people that already hit a bad shot. Um, and then the planting. Uh, again, it feels like it's just sort of the autogen planting. Um, there's not a whole lot going on in terms of um, anything that's really separating this from um, just the default, you know, boreal. Manatee said in chat that the best way to make these greens visible look, or sorry, the best way to make these greens look good is to raise the green higher so the retaining wall is very visible. That and try to make the plot built so that everything slopes more towards the water. That way all the shots play downhill and have better visuals. And yeah, I, I agree. Um, you know, a little bit of land movement could, could help with that too. Or you could even bring the, I mean, if you didn't bring the fairway up, you could bring the water back again, just like we talked about on the last hole. Um, I would be caution. I'd caution you to to make too big of a wa carry over water, but this this would only be you know like 20 yards. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, and then this green is this green is pretty challenging, but th because of the length of the hole, I don't think it's really too much of an issue. Well, this might be the best tee shot so far on the, the course. I love that we can see the water down here with the planting along it. Um, the co the covered bridge is a nice, it's just a nice little touch because it's, it's this is a visual that guides your eye down towards the landing area here. Um, again, I'd like to see a little bit more uh, planting, like just kind of under underbrush uh, in, in the background here. You can't see it because of chat. Let me... But over on the left-hand side here, um, I'd like to see some planting maybe coming down to the water there. 
um, just to kind of fill that in a little bit. You guys back over to the left there. All right. Yeah, we have a center line bunker out here, as as Manatee mentioned. It creates a nice line of sight out here, so it, it gives you kind of an aiming point out in the fairway. Um, it doesn't really come into play. Um, it is spline, so it fits nicely in there, but I feel like a collar of rough around this would uh, would would help it out a little bit. Um, overall, it makes sense, though. We're kind of pinching off the, the inside and opening up the outside. I'd argue that maybe the bunkers don't need to be there on the right, but... Again, they... The, visually, they could probably sit up a little bit higher if you wanted them to be visual. And playability-wise, they're just kind of hurting the golfer that's playing the safer shot. Although here, we seem to have a preferred angle from the outside right. I'm not sure about the green shape, though. <laughs> and again, we splined it so it sits nicely in the fairway, but I don't know that this bunker needs to be maybe in, in the fairway at all. It could probably sit over here to the right, to be honest. Kind of protect that, that right-hand side. Just because we, on on the T, on the T we were protecting this left hand side in here, so the right hand side would be the the safer play. So, from here we could probably leave the left hand side a little bit more open, and protect the right hand side of the green. So if you play the safer shot off the T, you have a little bit more challenging shot coming in. Oh, this is a par four, uh, par five. Okay. You're talking about these bunkers back here. Yeah, these bunkers here in the layup area is what Manatee's talking about in chat. They don't. Yeah, they, they don't need to be there. Um, you could definitely take these bunkers out and then even open up this space. Because, again, this is just a layup. Um, I, I think it's pretty clear that we're going for a gettable par 5 here. Um, so to have a bunker up here towards the green to kind of challenge a, a layup up into there is fine. But these ones back here really don't need to be there. If it was a three-shotter where we were trying to make the second shot interesting, I could see arguing that they need to be a carry bunker, but visually they aren't really doing anything. And then hole six. We've got another dog leg left. How many dog leg lefts have we had? Hole one was a dog leg left. Hole two, I mean... It was dog leg left and a dog leg right. Hole three came from the left. Hole four came from the left. Hole five came from the left. And hole six came from the left. So we are doing a lot of dog leg left, dog leg left, dog leg left. All the preferred angles seem to be coming from um, from the left or the hole seems to be going from right to left. Um, so I'd be mindful of, of that, where, you know, you're always favoring a draw off the tee. Um, here we have at least a left to right approach shot, which is, looks like it's being blocked out by a tree. We've got a little bit of a punch bowl green, okay. Got a par four. Yeah, I don't 
Uh, I don't like this tree. If I'm being honest. I don't. I don't think we need to block out the view of the the T for any reason, or of the approach shot. Sorry. Um, the the T shot is. I think the T shot's fine. Um, I'm. I don't know that this bunker needs to be here over to the right. Um, the preferred angle is going to be from the inside here, which is actually where we're blocking out the shot with the T with the tree. Um, so the bunkering should probably be on the inside of the dog leg here, and. The bunker out here to the right, you can kind of see, but I don't think it's visually adding anything. And the the preferred plays from the left. So let's bunker that side and then open up the right hand side to give you a safer safer look from that. And then yeah, uh, I would. I would just nuke this tree. I don't think it needs to be there. Um, and then the fairway, because I think we need a we need a reason for this fairway to do this. Um, you could use uh, land. You could use a bunker. Um, honestly, this this shot is pretty short. But even still, you could put a bunker in here that visually sits right in front of the green, but is actually you know 50 yards short. Um, so it looks like it's visually a carry hazard, but it's actually, um, it's actually not impeding on the, the shot too much. Um, and as long as you're leaving some space out there to, where am I? <laughs> Normal shot. Um, as long as you're leaving some space out here to the right for a layup, then I, I think you'd be fine in doing that. And then this bunker over here to the right, I think would make a lot of sense to to bring in a little bit closer or to get rid of it uh, entirely. I don't think it needs to be there um, at all, really, just because the, this is kind of... Actually, yeah. I think moving this in to the right and kind of blocking the, the view on the green. And yeah, what Jack said in chat there... Uh, a bunker there would provide interest because it's visually blocking the the green, whereas the the bunkers we saw before were just flanked on the left and right hand side. Uh, this one is sitting, this one would be sitting short of the green here, and I think bringing up this land here short right of the green and then moving that bunker in a little bit closer would would make a lot of sense as well. All right, and yeah, as far as uh, the plot goes and kind of how we would route it, we, we can really route it however we want because there's not a whole lot, uh, if I'm being honest, there's not a whole lot going on with the plot. It's relatively flat. We have a little bit of water. Um, you know, I could see using a little bit more of the, the wetlands uh, in, in the routing. Um, but yeah. Overall, I think there's there's some things that can be improved. Um, you know, just make sure we're not kind of repeating a lot of the same the same elements and, and introducing some new things. And Manatee mentioned, uh, I wish the plot was a bit more tied together. It seemed very loose. Yeah, it it. A lot of the elements that we use didn't really tie into um, other holes, whether it's visually or, or something like that. We kind of abruptly had, oh, here's water. Um, and a little more land movement, I think, could have could have uh, helped out uh, some of the hole designs as well as uh, made the the routing make a little more sense in terms of kind of dictating where it's where it's going. Um, we we kind of just built a loop, which is fine. Um, there's just you know for a plot challenge uh there, there's probably a little bit more interest we could have in, included in in the, in the plot in the routing so um that was ap i'm sorry abpg 1812 uh dl 3.1 new club so that wraps up our design league playthroughs for today we're right at three hours which is right where i wanted to be so um I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the playthroughs. I hope you guys got some valuable feedback. If you're looking for more feedback, um, 
that that's all I have to offer. But you know, there's there's a lot of other great uh, designers out in the community that are uh, always willing to help out. Um, so if you didn't like what I had to say, go ask them. <laughs> go PM Maddie, Maddie from Canada. Sorry, Maddie, if you're watching. But thanks again to everybody who uh, you know stuck around for today's stream. Uh, thanks, Kevin, for the. I don't know if you're still around lurking, but uh, thanks for the the. Uh, I think that was 10 gifted subs earlier. Uh, thanks again for that, and uh, congrats to everybody who uh, who got subs. And uh, I'll I'll work on getting an emote. Hopefully, uh, maybe I can have something done for you guys tomorrow. At least something simple that you guys can use. So, uh, yeah. Again, thanks again, guys. Um, I hope you have a good one, and uh, I'll be back again tomorrow at the same time. That's 2 p.m. Eastern for more Design League playthroughs. <laughs> there you go, Jack. <laughs> thanks a lot. Uh, have a good one.